Hello and welcome to the chaos that is my sewing area yet again. Yet again, I have not finished the tweed jacket that I was working on. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So the last episode you saw was the scrap dress and I absolutely exhausted myself making that. I I love it. The four tees in the skirt are spectacular and I think that novelty print of the lotus with the big leaves on the bodice turned out beautifully. But yeah, I was just, I was going to do a little bit of clean up before I started and cracked on with the green tweed jacket. But cleaning up after you've done something with scraps is ridiculous because I made that dress out of, oh, and I found another bag of scraps that need to be um, cut into usable strips because of course I did. But anyway, after I made the pink and green dress, I had a few bits left like, um, you know, just end cuts. So I had to pull apart the pinks and the greens and separate them again. So this is my pink. Um, so on the right is my pink ones and on the left is my green ones. And I'll use them in two separate things. I'm not going to make another pink and green thing. I'm sick of the side of pink and green at the moment. I mean, they're gorgeous colours, but yeah, it was exhausting making that gorgeous dress. Anyway, so they were done. And then I was like, well, while I'm at it, these are the scraps left over from the reversible jacket that I made. One side is sort of Las Vegas at night and the other side was forest, sort of magical forest. And then I also had some scraps left over from the red dress. So I pulled them apart, like unpicked them, pulled them apart. So the pinks are going in the pink pile, the orange and red are going in the red and the other ones, yeah. So I sorted them back out into their various colours, threw away the bits I couldn't use again. And by that time I was like, yeah, definitely not going to get this tweed jacket made. So... <sighs> Yeah, and there are the scraps. They are just staring at me now. Oh, and there's still that bag that I have to sort. Oh, I'll wait for another conference call to do that one. Anyway, so I decided to do a sewing vlog for this episode. So unfortunately, I haven't got to any of my olive and khaki tweeds this month. It's so... Yeah, I'm so disappointed with myself. Every time at the end of each month, I pack away the tweeds that I didn't use. And this month, I haven't used a single one of them. I love olive and khaki. And yeah, I haven't used a single, single one of them. I'm so disappointed in myself. No gold star for me. So um, yeah, this is a Linton tweed in flamingo and olive or khaki. I love it. So that's the one I'm thinking of doing because I'm definitely, I'm going to extend um, this month by one more episode so that on Sunday will be a tweed and it will be an olive tweed. So there is that one. I quite like the, oh, this is just still out because I love it so much. But yeah, probably definitely not going to do that one. And oh, I love this one. It sort of looks like dragon scales, I think. But yeah, I'm not really in the mood for sequins. You kind of have to be in the mood, a combative mood because, you know, it's a bit hit and miss using machine, sewing machine and sequins. This one, on the other hand, is actually a knit. So I have to stabilize it before I make it. So that'll be a good video because it's informative. So again, sequins with the tweed um, pattern on them. This is another Linton tweed. I have three yards of this or three meters actually. So yeah. And at the start of the month, I said, I want to make three jackets out of it maybe or two different ones. What I meant by three of the same Chanel style jackets is I would bead them differently. So the base jackets would all sort of be the same. And then I'd do different beading. That's just another sequin fabric that um I'm not sure I've even shown you that. And these are a couple of Linton tweeds. I love this flagged one so much. I really wanted to get that one made. But, um, oh, I love this one. Okay, blanket, I love all the tweeds. That's why I bought them. Those, the last one and this one are also Linton tweeds. This one is very Chanel, like very, very Chanel. Actually, I, I'm pretty sure it's inspired by a collection from, ooh, is it 2009? I can't remember. 
Anyway, that's an old fashioned one. Another one that looks like tartan that I absolutely love. I want to make a short sleeve. Oh, a uh, Vivian Westwood inspired one. This is the tweed that was, um, if you saw the layer cake dress episode, that layer cake dress was inspired by this piece of tweed. <laughs> I'm not sure anyone cares but me. But yeah, I didn't add any of the tealy blue colour because I thought that would throw out the colours in the dress. But yeah, that's why that dress is such an interesting mix of colours. Uh, yeah, I never would have got to it without being inspired by that bit of tweed. Anyway, I've put most of my tweeds away, but I kept these two out. I think I'll probably use this one because I have the perfect piece of silk for the lining. So yeah, I'll probably do that one. Also, also the block interfacing is interesting, um, is an interesting element. And now I'm just looking at all my scraps that I have to do. Oh, so yeah, I've got probably do the green ones next because there's so many of them. I can't believe there's still so many after I made that gorgeous pink and green dress. Anyway, enough about my scraps. I bought 10 Vogue patterns um, a while back now and oh, this is me reminding myself. You know how, well, I'm not sure if you know, but beaders usually have a jar that's called bead soup and it's like all their leftover beads that they can't be bothered p filing back in their beading collection system. And um, yeah, I currently have a storage container full of beads that haven't gone back into the correct boxes. So I'm thinking maybe next month I'll do a commering my beads or something. It's been about two years since my last commering my beads. So I think I'm well and truly um, due for one. Oh, and yeah, I still haven't hand stitched those cuffs of those puffy sleeves. And also there's two other um, ones from last month that I haven't finished either. And this is all the jackets that I haven't done. I think next month will be a jack mostly jacket month. Like I'll make the occasional dress, but I think I'll work on the unfinished. Oh yeah, and I still have to finish that top and make a dress to go with it and do a sew along as well. I have been getting a few questions about sew alongs. They just take so long when you have to film every single step. Like you need the right lighting conditions so I can do some things at night. Um, this is me deciding, yeah, I'll probably do this one because I really love the silk that I've got for the lining of that. Okay, let's take a look at those of Vogue patterns. Now, if you're outside America, most countries can't buy from simplicity.com, but you can on Etsy and eBay, the people in America buy them and resell them. So you can do it that way. So I bought this Berta pattern and this is Berta 6123. And it's listed as super easy, but I made it incredibly complicated by embellishing it. But it turned out really beautifully. So I recommend that pattern if you are looking for something that's easier than your average Chanel style jacket. This is a good one. So I bought this, but then there were also Vogue patterns on sale. So I bought like 10 of them, I think. A couple of them are jacket ones that I'd been wanting to buy for a while. And some of the others I just bought sort of spur of the moment because they looked interesting and I thought I might like to try and make them up. So we'll do the two dress and top ones first, then we'll get into the jackets. This one here, sorry about the rustling, I was just getting the pattern, Vogue 9112. And it's a dress and I just thought the necklines, these sort of collar things are interesting. There's two variations and I just like the lines of the pattern. I thought, yeah, just interesting. I'll probably make it longer or I guess you could just wear it over trousers as a top. But yeah, mostly I bought it for the neckline because I love those Jackie O jackets with the set back collar. So yeah, that's why I got that one. This one, I just thought, well, the one on the left, I thought it looked more interesting. But when you see the style lines of the, of the top, it's actually more like a shirt that has a weird placket at the front. So yeah, I, I originally got it because I want a top that I can do embroidery around the neckline and on the cuffs. 
I don't think this is it, but I do think I'll still make it up. And then next we have this one. It's a Chanel style coat rather than jacket, but I'm just going to crop it at the waistline and make it up into a Chanel style jacket. But this one is interesting because it has princess seams into the arm side rather than a regular traditional princess seams like that go up to the middle of the shoulder. So I thought this was, I think it, it has good lines and the finish, like the sample ones they have on the front look good. So I think it will turn out well as a jacket length, a, you know, a cropped collarless jacket. So I thought that would be a good one to try. Vogue 1926. It only goes from a size eight. So yeah, I might have to size it down a little bit, but you know, it does look, generally speaking, it looks pretty good. This one is a Vogue, um, not the Vogue, they're all Vogue. Why do I keep saying that? Anyway, it's a blazer, but it doesn't have lapels or a collar. I couldn't decide whether I really like it or I really don't like it. <laughs> anyway, so I bought it. The rest of it, like it's, the rest of it looks really nice and simple and I quite like it. So I ended up getting it. In, um, there's another one I was sort of choosing between the two and I think I ended up getting both of them but I think I prefer this one it's just got nicer cleaner lines and then the next one is um, this one is an odd one at first I thought it was a motorbike jacket but then when you turn it around and look at the style lines it's sort of more of an anorak like so there's two views one has a high neck high collar and the other one is, it has a hood like an anorak. So yeah, I don't know. It's just very weird. I think I'll make a couple of different ones. I'll make a mock-up of one. Yeah, I'm not sure which one I'll do. I'll probably end up doing both, but I'll do one first. I like the idea of a higher back and then a lower front to the bottom of your jacket. And this is another more more like an actual motorbike jacket or moto jacket whatever they're called and this one has small pieces lots of small pieces which is weird in a jacket like I hate an external yoke and I don't like um a center back seam either but the thing is these are for oh that stretch thing is just for the trousers the actual jacket is made out of woven fabric and it's not stretchy at all but the reason all the pieces are so small is because it's supposed to be made originally made out of leather and each piece like leather is made in hides because it's you know from animals I'm not going to make it in leather but that's why the pieces are such odd sizes so I thought it might be a good interesting exercise to make it and it's a nice like the sample jacket looks quite nice so yeah that's why I bought that one 15 17 and then this one is a coat. I don't live in a cold climate. If you live somewhere snowy or um, windy, then you really do need a big, you know, lots of big winter coats. But I just, I think I might do it just at hip level because I quite like, I, I live in a mild climate, but I do like having the occasional, you know, non Chanel jacket or, you know, small coat. And I, this is a nice, the lapels and collar on this one are so nice and traditional, but with a little bit of a 70s element in there. So I thought this was a nice one. I'm going to make it shorter than that um, insert, but I also really love the way the back falls. Like I love the style lines of this. So that's Vogue 1837. It just, I don't know, it's just really pretty. So I thought I would make that up maybe in a, um corduroy I'm not sure and this one um I really don't like the beige one in the middle <laughs> I just don't like that but the other two seem quite nice I again I'll probably crop these because they would look like an absolute sack on me otherwise because I have teensy tiny shoulders but um yeah I like the red and the blue I think they're quite good and quite good lines and it's a very easy vogue so I get a lot of people asking if I can um, do a sew along for a, the simplest jackets. And this one seemed um, it, like it's got good lines, but also it doesn't look too complex. And this is the other one without um, 
So this is a crossover one and it doesn't have any lapels or collar. I think I prefer the one on the left personally, but I thought I would buy both of them and read the instructions of them and see what the differences are and whether it's worth making up both of them or not. So yeah, I feel like I learn a lot. Oh, plus I like these trousers better. Oh, and then this is the last one. I got this mostly because it's just such a fabulous, um, I love the fabric. It is so fabulous. Anyway, oh, and it also has a sash. People keep asking me if I, there's a pattern for a sash. I just use the Butterick double six double seven, but honestly, when I make a sash, I just use a little bit of leftover fabric to make my sashes, but this one has a sash pattern if you want one. And also, yeah, the jacket is nice, clean lines. I like it. I'm not sure about the trousers, but yeah. And I wouldn't sash a jacket necessarily or a blazer, but I do like that blazer. I think it's rather fabulous. So there you go. And there's a few jacket patterns and I really want to try this dress. I think it's cool. I love the neckline and definitely want to make a little sort of jacket length coat. Maybe in October, but yeah, I like the pattern. And this one, the Chanel style um, at jacket length again, I think that one looks like it's going to be a good pattern. Oh, and also ages ago, I bought these braids. There was a, um, I had a, an appointment in the city and I, there was a craft store and I think they were just like decided that they were not going to sell, um, you know, braiding or, or beading anymore or something. Anyway, they were selling off whole spools and yeah, so I got two braiding and one beads. I, obviously, I love tweed, but I especially love Lesage tweed. In um, It's this artisan um, company in Paris, and they hand make the tweeds, the high-end tweeds for Chanel. And they like put zips in there and braiding and lace and ribbon and things like that. And I want to make my own handmade tweed at some point. So yeah, I just every now and then when I see something that would be perfect, I buy it up. So I got some olive braid and I got some forest green and I also got those beat that sort of strand of beads so I'll just sort of make one yard of handmade tweed so there's not very much there but there's enough to make one yard of tweed which I'll then turn into a jacket so yeah it's it's going to be a while before I make it but yeah and I'll mix it with like um you know, yarns and all different things in there. But I thought it would be good to get while it was, you know, it was just randomly on sale. If I wait until I actually want to make the tweed to buy everything, then I'll have to buy it by the, by the yard, which would be a huge expense. So yeah, it, you know, it wasn't cheap, but it was much cheaper than buying it by the yard. So anyway, um, that's it for this vlog I it's not really a sewing vlog because I'm not doing any sewing just sort of tidying up and pulling apart those darn scraps and yeah getting them ready to you know sorting them back into their piles so that they're ready to go for the next time I was very tempted to just throw out all the scraps but yeah I'm glad that I did it anyway and the tweeds are mostly away I have saved one to make one more jacket I am so determined and I've got the perfect silk for this one. It's just going to be so gorgeous. So yeah, I was going to make the green one, but the lining for that is um, I'm sort of using up one navy tree, uh, navy silk for the torso of that lining and the sleeves are from a different blue. So I wasn't sure whether people would be like, oh, anyway. So I'll say that I will try and make that one up on the weekend as well. But I think the episode that I'll show you will be that lovely one with the, the bubbly one, all textural and three-dimensional. I love it. It's so interesting. Anyway, that is the end of this vlog. Thank you very much for watching. What have you been up to in your sewing room or just outside your sewing room? <laughs> Sometimes we don't always get to the sewing. What can I say? But, you know, it's part of the process. I think if I'd left this mess one more day, I would have screamed. It was getting very frustrating. Oh, I've still got that bag of scraps. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to save that. 
Oh, and that stack of fabric at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, that's a fabric haul that I haven't done yet as well. I sort of got a couple of different stacks for a couple of different fabric hauls. So yes, I think I'll, but now that I've cleaned up most of it, I'll be able to do those fabric hauls. After the tree jacket, most definitely after the tree jacket is done. But oh, look at all these ingredients. So many more vintage patchwork dresses just waiting to be made. Hours of fun, hours and hours. Well, you know, weeks, years.